Look, Stuart, right now, no. We have a lot of cash. We haven't been buying this bear market bounce that we had in January, as you know, because we've told our clients we believe the recession is officially underway. 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 Well, we are in the early stages of what is probably going to be uh, a two-year recession. So that's where I think we are right now. And the beauty about this call is that it separates itself from the consensus view that uh, we're going to uh, experience a soft landing or a short and shallow recession. It could be shallow. It's not going to be short. That's where we are. So why? So I'm actually come from a different perspective. I thought it's going to be sharper and shorter. Where Where's the length come from? Is it the length of the bear market potentially as earnings come down or the recession itself. Talk me through that framework, because you're the first person who's really talking about a long recession. Well, it really comes from what the catalyst is going to have to be to get us out of the recession, uh, which is, it looks like it started even earlier than I thought. Uh, although back-to-back -back negative quarters of GDP isn't the technical official NBER defined recession, uh, it's a it's a Wall Street rule of thumb uh, because it always works. Uh, whenever you've had back to back negative quarters, you've been in recession. Uh, whenever you've had two quarters down out of three, you've been in recession 100% of the time. So that's where we are. Um, there's really no doubting it unless you want to attack the historical record. But you see, the reason why I think it's going to be long is because it's already started. And so has the Fed tightening cycle just started in March. And the peak impact on the economy from whatever the Fed does, whether it's easing or whether it's tightening, uh, there's lags involved because the economy ongoingly resets to a different interest rate regime. And the Fed only started raising rates in March and they've gone a long way. They've gone 225 basis points. Uh, and even once they pause, they're still going to be undertaking balance sheet reduction. So they'll still be tightening policy even after they move to the sidelines and interest rates. Once we acknowledge that we're in a recession, and I think it's going to take the consensus uh, some time, because when you really look back to say to the great financial crisis, uh, the recession wasn't acknowledged really until Lehman collapsed. Uh, the view was that it was a soft landing. Uh, and you go back to the tech wreck and uh, people were surprised uh, that the NBR actually called it a recession that started in March uh, of 01 and ended in November. The bottom line is that once you get into recession, you need a catalyst to get out. And uh, fiscal policy continues to operate in a way that is contractionary for the economy. And I think ultimately the catalyst will be a move back to disinflation that gives the Fed the opportunity to ease monetary policy. Uh, but that's not going to happen immediately. And we have a situation where the Fed has been shamed um, because it blew the, the inflation call, chose the wrong word, because although they weren't wrong on transitory, transitory doesn't have a timestamp in any definition. Um, but they panicked. The Fed, even in the face of back-to-back -back quarters of negative growth, and it's a debate as to whether or not Jay Powell saw to, you know, today's GDP report yesterday, the Fed has been tightening into a recession, uh, which really only happened during the Volcker era in the early 1980s, when you had back-to-back -back recessions separated you know, a year apart. You could almost argue that that whole period was about a three-year recession. And you have a central bank chief who in March, in front of Richard Shelby, at uh, a Senate uh, committee presentation. Uh, Powell did not compare himself to Arthur Burns or William Miller uh, or Alan Greenspan or Ben Bernanke. He brought up the fact that Paul Volcker was the greatest economic public servant uh, who ever lived. And um, we know that Volcker killed inflation by killing the economy. So I'm getting a sense here that people are questioning whether or not the Fed is going to go again in September. Of course, now they're, they're debt independent. They're no longer pre-committing. But the bottom line is that even in the face of this economic malaise, uh, he retained a de facto tightening bias. And that speaks volumes because it tells me that it is going to take a lot to get this Fed to start to ease monetary policy again, which means they have to stop quantitative tightening and cut interest rates. I think that will be next year's story. Um, and then there's going to have to be a lag because historically, 
the recession ends towards the tail end of the Fed easing cycle. The recession doesn't normally end in the early stages. And I could see people would be shaking their heads. What's he even talking about? But it's an answer to your question. We are in the early stages of a recession and the Fed is still tightening monetary policy. Why would anybody think this is going to be over quickly? Um, the historical record is very clear. Uh, you need a catalyst uh, to stimulate the economy once a recession starts. It's normally monetary policy. Uh, frequently, it's been monetary and fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is out the window. And uh, the bottom line is that it looks as though the Republicans are going to take the House and the Senate in November. Uh, there's no fiscal stimulus coming for a long period of time. It's all going to be on the Fed. And it looks as though the Fed's not going to do anything until it sees the whites of the eyes of inflation, headline inflation, heading back down towards its target. You could argue they were late uh, to tighten policy. They're probably going to be late to ease policy. Um, but that tells me that when I trace through the lags between what the Fed does, trace it through to what it means for the economy, I think we're looking at a two-year recession. Uh, I don't know so much about the magnitude. So much of that will depend, I think, on the extent to which we have a big negative wealth effect on spending if the housing market joins the equity market. Uh, in an asset price deflation, I think that's quite possible. Uh, the extent to which these uh, high cash balances just stay as high cash balances on the household balance sheet instead of diverting its way into the real economy, which is what most economists and the Fed thinks. It's, so it's, it's hard to say how deep it's going to be. I am probably a more conviction over its duration. And that's actually, I think, more important because there is no correlation between the severity of the recession and what the stock market does. It's much more important timing when the next recovery is going to start because historically the stock market puts in the fundamental low two thirds of the way through the recession, whatever that low is going to be. Will it be 10% down, 20% down, 30% down? The major point is that instead of trying to pick at what point we bottom, it's more important to identify when is the start of the next bull market? Uh, when will that start from whatever level it's going to be? And historically, that's two thirds of the way through the recession. That is actually when people say that nobody rings the alarm bell at the lows. Well, actually, if you can try and time the contours of the economy through the lags from Fed policy, you can come up with a reasonable approximation as to when as opposed to what level, but the timing of when it's going to be safe to dip toes back into the risk pool, you know, outside of these intermittent bear market rallies. What's the fundamental low? The fundamental low takes place at the tail end of the Fed easing cycle and the tail end of the economic recession. So uh, that's next year's story, probably second half. So <clears throat> one of the things I've looked at is that the markets and the commodity market. So I, I created an indicator of rate of change of rates, rate of change of commodity prices, rate of change of the dollar. And we've had one of the largest, sharpest tightenings in all history, regardless of what the Fed, right? The markets kind of did it for us and inflation did the rest. And that when I look at that, it gives me kind of ISM getting down to 35. Now, the question is, is do the Fed ma even matter? Or will the markets price this? Because, you know, I think the bond yields start falling and eventually the yield curve starts steepening again. And the equity market seems to sense this. Now, whether it's too early or not, different matter for sure. But the point being is, do we even care about the Fed or will the bond market be the truth? 